Way down among Brazilians, coffee beans grow by the billions. So they've got to find. Oh, hay fever. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> so, as a knife maker, I work a lot with Damascus, as a lot of knife makers do. And one of the good tricks to increase contrast is to etch your Damascus after you've done your etching process with ferric chloride or whatever acid you you use you do a secondary etch process in a type of acid called phosphoric acid which is found plentifully in cheap nasty instant coffee and so coffee etches are a thing it's a really good way to increase contrast without actually uh, etching away depth of steel but not much has been sort of clarified or confirmed about the efficacy of coffee over time. So what I mean by that is a, a lot of knife makers will make up a big thing of instant coffee and put it aside and use it to etch all of their knives and only replace it every so often. Um, whereas other knife makers, myself included, or people like Kyle Royer, for example, will make a fresh batch every single time. And nobody really, as far as I can tell, nobody really has done the work to find out whether you need to or whether you really should. So I thought it's a pretty ex uh, simple experiment to do. I'm going to get some uh, acidity strips, uh, and we're going to do a bit of bit of sciencing, bit of bit of experimentation to see whether or not coffee loses its acidity over time. Because this is the key factor here. We're not gauging taste or or flavor we we want to know whether it's still acidic over time now water just water on its own gets stale a lot of people don't realize this it'll actually sort of it'll change its molecular state over time and i want to know a does coffee that's made with water also go bad uh, and not be effective anymore and also i want to know whether or not the presence of steel in it over time causes it to go bad. So we're going to have to run a series of tests. So we're going to have to get some containers to put these in. We're going to have to get some instant coffee. We're going to get our pH strips and we're going to get some steel. Now you might think that this is sort of an incidental thing, but full-blown arguments have broken out about this in the knife-making community of the people that say, no, you've got to make a fresh batch every time or you've got to mix it this way or you've got to use this temperature or no, I just leave a thing and use it when I need it and, uh, you know, make it and leave it like a ferric tank. Or some people say you can store coffee as long as you need it to once it's made and then use it. And basically this experiment is to sort of point out which overall is the one that works the best. As simple as that. I'm going to make initially three batches of coffee, uh, shitty instant coffee. Uh, and I'm going to make sure there's the same amount in each uh, jar because Traditionally, you make it extra strong. Like normally, you might put in a spoonful of it for a cup of it for yourself. Uh, for this, we're going to be putting in like five spoonfuls for a cup. Um, and I'm going to measure it to make sure each jar has the same amount. So the first one I'm going to make with boiling water. Second one I'm going to make with just warm water out of the, the, the hot tap in the sink. And the f final one I'm going to have room temperature water. I'm going to see whether or not this actually affects the acidity because there has been some debate as to whether or not it does. So we're going to start out by knowing which is the way to temperature wise to make this coffee as uh, highly acidic as possible or if there's any difference at all. So we'll find that out. Then we're going to do uh, two tests. The first one is going to be we're going to take the one that is the most acidic of these three and we're going to um, test it with no steel in it after 72 hours. So, and compare it to what it was when it was freshly made to see whether or not the acidity levels go down. And the other one, we're actually going to put a bit of 1084 steel in and we're going to, uh, we're going to do this three times. So in that jar, it'll have three different pieces of 1084 steel. Uh, the first one will go in straight away and we're going to check it after 24 hours and check the acidity to see whether or not the presence of steel in there has actually affected the acidity. Um, then we're going to put a second one in there and do for 48 hours. And then finally, we're going to have a, a jar with the 
the most acidic coffee as well. Next to the, the one with no steel in it, we're going to put some 1084 steel in there. 1084 traditionally is very heavily affected by coffee going jet black. Uh, we're going to make sure the piece of steel is um, sanded up to a good grit as well so that it's nice even surface. And we're going to check the acidity of the coffee. We don't really care what the coffee does to the steel, um, but we're going to check the acidity of the coffee after 24 hours, after 48 hours, and after 72 hours, and see whether or not it changes over that time more with steel in there than it does without steel in there, and see whether or not the presence of steel actually affects anything. Because uh, it might, and it'd be very interested to see, because if somebody has one a, a coffee bath tucked away in their workshop that they repeatedly use, every time they put steel into it, is it affecting the ability of it to etch? Or would it be slowly reducing its efficacy over time anyway? I want to know. We want some hard evidence here. So let's go set this up, and we'll see how we go. So uh, phosphoric acid is not the only acid that's in coffee. Coffee is just like a soup of different acids, uh, particularly instant coffee. Uh, it tends to average out around a pH of between 4.5 and 5.5, which is mildly acidic. Um, not anything that should do much in the way of damage to you, but because there's multiple types of acids in there, um, it does make it a little bit of an unpredictable thing because different brands and uh, preparations and that will vary those different levels. You've got citric acid, you've got acetic acid, you've got quinic acid, you've got your phosphoric acid, you've got chlorogenic acid, you've got formic acid, you've got malic acid, you've got pyrilidone carboxylic acid, you've got caffeic acid. It's all this, this soup of acidity. So um, I believe from my limited knowledge of, of chemistry that phosphoric acid is the one that's going to be doing the actual etching of the steel. Um, and hopefully all of this shows up because um, using litmus paper is not going to detect the levels of each of those different acids. Okay, so for our experimentation here, we're using good old international roast coffee. Now, anybody who's ever stayed in a cheap, shitty hotel <laughs> is going to recognize this brand. It's, it's sort of uh, internationally renowned as being the staple of terrible instant coffees. And this is what I like to use for my coffee etches. I know other people have their preferred uh, things like, you know, Nescafe Bold and, and Blend 43 and all that sort of thing. But this is what I'm using. Now, that being said, different brands of coffee, different ages of that coffee, etc. are going to potentially affect the outcome of this. So, just to keep things standardized, to see, try and eliminate the brand of coffee as a factor, I'm going to use this brand, the same measurement of this brand, for each of the three jars. So, first jar is going to be hot water. Now, I've just boiled up a kettle. And all of these jars, despite being different sizes, hold the same amount. And I've put three heaped tablespoons of coffee in each of these, which is a lot for such a small thing. Each of these only holds about 150 mils. So uh, this one was going to have warm water, which is basically t water from the kitchen tap that is warm. I'll give these all a stir. And the final one is going to be room temperature tap water. Now all of these three waters came from the same water source as well, just to keep that standardized. All these jars have been washed thoroughly to minimize chance of um, things affecting, like residues, etc. affecting. I'm just going to grab a um, paddle pop stick and I'm going to mix these up. Okay, so thorough mix on A. Thorough mix on B, and thorough mix on C. We'll get all that coffee powder mixed in. Man, this stuff's so awful, I'm surprised it doesn't dissolve the glass that it's in. Already, it's interesting to note the colour differences between them. Notice that A, from the hot water, is much darker. 
Now it's not the most uh, scientifically accurate, I know, way of doing things. You can get digital pH meters, but I'm using a little litmus test paper to actually do this. So we're going to let these sit for just a few minutes because even when you're making real coffee, the ideal brew time is about seven to nine minutes. So I'm going to leave these, even though it's horrible fake coffee, we're going to be leaving these for the same time just to give the coffee the maximum time possible to permeate through the water. A little later. And so through the magic of video editing, it's uh, been the appropriate amount of time and still the color difference, it's not as noticeable now, but the cold water blend is much paler than these two. Uh, it still is darkest, darker, lightest. Um, these two are close, but there's still a noticeable amount of brightness in this one compared to that one. Funnily enough, totally irrelevant to the um, experiment, but the warm water had the most foam, the cold water had the second most, and the boiling hot had uh, almost none. Very interesting. don't know what that's going to mean for our test, but uh, if you've never worked with lit litmus paper before, you uh, dip it into the fluid and it will turn a color, and you can tell the pH of the uh, liquid by the color that it turns. Very, very simple. And a handy little uh, piece of technology. We're gonna keep these separated, and we're gonna take a look at them. Don't worry too much about this angle, because we're gonna get a nice close-up view of these after we're done. So, first litmus paper goes into jar A. And we'll give it a chance to really Settle in there. And it's got foam on it, so we just wipe that off. And this is looking pretty much 5 pH. Not quite at 4, but very much close to 5. Interesting. So that's our first one. Our second one is going to be B, which is our warm water. We'll just put that in there. Give it a little swizzle. I'm not actually expecting these to be much different, so I'm going to be surprised if they are. Okay. Wipe that foam off. Let's have a look at this. Still pretty... Ooh, a bit closer to four there. Yes, a little bit closer to four. Interesting. Well, anyway, we'll put this aside and we'll get back to this. And our final one, cold coffee. Who doesn't like their cold brew, right? All right, so in it goes. Swizzle it around. And then wipe off our foam. Hmm. Interestingly, it's getting closer to three there. Very interesting. All right. Let's go over to the, the workbench. We'll have a look at these a bit closer up. Okay, we're over at our workbench, and these are the three litmus papers that we uh, put through the coffees before. So, once again, we were using litmus paper. Now, these colors that they turn basically tell you whether or not it's acidic, which are low numbers, or basic, which is four, uh, 14 is, is about as basic as you can get. So, Ugg Boots and Pumpkin Spice Latte level of basic. Um, and so... The colors that this turns, you can see they start out very neutral, which six and seven, you know, seven is perfect pH neutral. These start out just slightly acidic. But have a look at where the coffee touched. Now, it's not the most scientifically accurate thing to measure this using strips of paper, but we can see that that... It's noticing here, looking at the camera, the camera is picking up the colors differently to what my eye is. 
my eye is seeing this is very much a solid four. Whereas on camera, I notice it looks a bit different. But this one here, you'll notice, is very much noticeably darker. Let me try and pick this up. And put it next to the other one. You can see it is a shade darker. Not by much, though. This one, however, is very much darker than the other two. Let me put it in the middle there so you can really see the difference. Now, the funny thing is, it's not quite all the way down to, to two, but it's getting there. Because if you put it next to the three, it's much darker than the three. It's heading into the, the reds. Um, and so it's somewhere between, I'd say about maybe 2.6 pH, which means that making the instant coffee with just straight room temperature tap water yielded a noticeably, let me just move the light here, try and get more accurate color view, there you go. Using room temperature water made a noticeably more acidic cup of coffee which is why we're going to use room temperature water for the further experiment. So what we need to do is set up two jars with coffee. Both will be a room temperature, but one will have steel in it, 1084 steel, and the other one will have nothing in it. And we're going to check back on those every day, every 24 hours for three days and see what happens. So let's set it up. And now that we know that room temperature instant coffee is the way to go if you want that acidity, um, we're going to use room temperature for both of them. So we'll set that up and see what happens. Okay, so we've got two jars. We've got just coffee and a cafe a la 1084. So I've made some 1084 and we've gotten it to a, a satin finish. It's about 240 grit satin finish. And we're going to plop that in there. And the theory that we are testing here is does the presence of steel somehow use up the acid uh, in the process of etching the steel. So uh, we're going to check because, as I said, some people like to just keep a pre-made uh, tub of coffee that they will etch knife after knife after knife in. And I want to know, does that make it go bad over time? Or just does just simply time passing make the coffee go bad? And by go bad, I mean become less acidic, less potent for the etching. And once this is done, we are going to do a test etch. I'm going to um, pit these two jars against each other. One of them, which has been left for 72 hours and not had any steel put in it, and one that has been left for 72 hours with steel in it, uh, manganese steel too. So steel that has been affected by the coffee etch. Um, and I'm going to put two more or less identical pieces of steel, uh, one in each jar, leave it for four hours, and then have a look at the edge and see what sort of difference it makes. And this will be the final test to see whether or not it's worth making a fresh batch every time. Because as a control, when I do that test, I'm also going to make a fresh batch of coffee, um, the same coffee, same... Um, measurements etc and we're going to see how it compares to the old coffee and the old coffee that's been used for steel 24 hours later okay so it's been 24 hours now and we're going to check the ph of the two jars that we've got and uh, compare it to what it was when we made it fresh and see if there's any difference at all so uh, the main thing um, not not personally, I'm not really expecting there to be much difference over the course of the three days with these. Uh, what I'm most interested in is the final experiment that we're going to do, where we actually check to see how well it etches. Uh, each of the two jars still etch compared to etching in a freshly made pot of coffee. So anyway, we'll check these two uh, pH levels out and see whether or not it's made a difference being 24 hours later. Okay, so we've got our two jars. We've got our litmus paper. Let's have a look. So, just coffee. And coffee that's had some 1084 in there, which is <laughs> probably well dark by now. But, grab a litmus strip. And let's have a look. So, just coffee on its own.
Okay. And we'll compare this to the yesterday's results in a second. We'll do a close up at the bench. And then coffee with 1084. My memory's not good enough to know just by looking at it how good it was. Let me tell you, the smell is quite strong. <laughs> because they closed the jars up. Okay. Alright, let's take a closer look at these and see what they look like. Okay, so this is our Just Coffee. Now you compare it to the room temperature um, from yesterday and it is noticeably different looks much closer to what the hot coffee looked like which was um, not as acidic so yeah noticeably less acidic than when we first started and this is the one from the one that actually had steel in it a bit closer to that, to be honest, because it's much darker than that one. So the one with the steel in it looks like it's actually maintained its acidity. So I'm just going to grab the actual litmus paper packet, and we can have a look against the numbers. Okay. So just coffee. Yeah, that's about a five and a half, maybe just five. So it's about the same as hot coffee or hot prepared coffee. This one, however, is much darker. More in the four realm. So the jar that had steel in it is still more acidic. It's, it's more acidic than the jar that just had coffee in it. So we're going to leave um, both of these jars going for another um, 24 hours and come back and look at it after a total of 48 hours and see the difference. Just a quick note here. Uh, between uh, days, I am stripping the oxides off the piece of steel that is being put into the, uh, the jar with 1084 in it. So I didn't want the oxide build up to maybe um, limit how much chemical reaction was going on between days uh, and this is basically to simulate having a permanent coffee container to one side where you're putting in new knives each time so I'm stripping it back between days just so that you know and in that goes again lids going back on leave these for another 24 hours and we'll come back tomorrow and have a look 24 hours later. Alright, back with another day. It's been 48 hours now. And we're going to see how these are going. Now, if you remember from yesterday, the coffee that it had steel in it was a little bit more acidic. It was really not by much, but it was a little bit more. Let's see if that's been exaggerated today. So, our first one is straight coffee dip 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 the excess off there and then holding it about five bollocks of things and then we'll try coffee with the 1084 in there Dippy 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 dip. Hmm. Dip. Noticeably darker this time. It's still not a huge difference, but let's go over to the bench and we'll look at these closer. Okay, so this is our just coffee. And this is our coffee with 1084 look at that noticeably different here's an interesting thing 
I reckon it's starting to get a a bit of a greenness to it, or do you reckon it's more orange? Yeah, doesn't show as much on camera, but it's actually yeah. That's uh today it's much closer to the greens, whereas. On the left there is very much to the fire. Once again, I'm running into that thing that does look very different to my eye than it does on camera. But I'm seeing, I reckon, eight. That's very interesting. So there was like a peak of acidity, and now it is becoming more alkaline. More basic. That's very cool. I've been noticing the colors really solidify after they've had a chance to dry properly. Um, you can see that slight difference in acidity from yesterday here. And you can very much clearly see the differences in shades here. So um, I'll be interested to see what this looks like, what this settles on uh, tomorrow. But we're going to have to wait another... Uh, 24 hours to see how this turns out because this is getting interesting. So as before, I will be uh, cleaning off the surface of the steel, the oxides off the steel and putting it back in as a clean piece. And once again, no chemicals are used in the stripping process, just clean Scotch-Brite pads. I don't want to introduce any adulterants into the coffee that might change the acidity level. So I'll see you guys in another 24 hours and we'll look at it again. Just a little update though, I just uh, took the 1084 out of the jar with the 1084 in it to clean off the oxides and I noticed that it was nowhere near as etched it had, as it had been the first time I pulled it out to clean it off. Maybe just some oils from my finger or something because I'm not looking at the etch for it at the moment so I'm not really taking the time to make sure there's no finger oils or anything like that you would normally do. Um, so. It's interesting. Just an interesting point. We'll see how this goes. I'll see you guys in 24 hours. The next day. So this is the final test we're going to do of these jars uh, before we go and compare it to a fresh, freshly made pot. All right. Struggling with hay fever a lot today. So you'll have to excuse the mucusy voice. All right. Just copy. 72 hour old coffee that has had nothing in it. Okay. Still kind of looking like a solid five, to be honest. Maybe, maybe a four and a half. All right. The one with some 1084 in it. There we go. Oh, that's very dark, isn't it? It's almost pushing into yeah, definitely becoming more alkaline with the presence of steel. Our suspicions from yesterday are confirmed, but let's just head over to the workbench where we can look at this a little closer and do a bit of a compare and we're back here again so putting these side by side you can really see the difference here there is a distinct difference in acidity between the uh, straight coffee and the coffee that has had steel in it and this is becoming noticeably more alkaline um, by the presence of steel so even with the age of the coffee notwithstanding the presence of steel is clearly using the coffee up so to speak so we'll pop this fella down here and this fella down here like that's you can see the difference there over time the, uh, the straight coffee has actually maintained uh, its acidity fairly well, um, surprisingly well. I actually was 
kind of expecting just the water going going stale to affect it in some way because it is a a chemical process that's going on but not really at least over the course of 72 hours i'm sure over longer periods it would make a big difference but that's pretty distinctive presence of steel that's the equivalent of say three knives going into that jar uh, and it's already made it so alkaline compared to a freshly made batch. So um, pretty cool looking uh, setup, to be honest. This is, uh, has been an interesting experience. Because the sort of the redness, purpliness that's been coming out of, you know, we've got our cold, cold brewed coffee. Um, showing distinct signs of being far more acidic compared to this. But then those distinct green tints here and here really showing that we're going alkaline in the presence of steel. But this isn't where the experiment ends. The final experiment is going to be a comparison of three things. Uh, so the final experiment is going to have three jars in it. One jar is going to be the jar that we've been using that's had the steel in it for, th uh, for 72 hours. Uh, the second one's going to be the jar that has not had anything in it except just straight coffee, but has been left for 72 hours. And the third jar is going to be a freshly made batch of coffee using room temperature water because that was the one that proved to be the most acidic. And I'm going to prepare three pieces of 1084 steel and I'm going to polish that steel up to quite a high finish, about 800 grit finish, maybe all the way up to 1200, maybe even buffed and, and made shiny because... I work with 1084 a lot. 1084 is my favorite steel out of all of the steels. And so I use it a lot. And I'm very familiar with the effects that coffee, specifically that ratio of international roast coffee, has on it. And I know that after just two hours, highly polished 1084 in that ratio of international roast coffee should produce a jet black finish. And I mean jet black. I mean like black like my top sort of black and so I want to do three pieces of steel, prepare them to be as identical as I can make them and leave them in those three jars for two hours. And I want to put them side by side and I want to see how they uh, turn out because I know that the one that I make fresh is going to be jet black. So I want to see how the other two compare and how dark they get the, the material. So let's uh, set up those three bits of steel and we'll give it a test. So one very important step in this is that the steels that we use need to be hardened in order for any sort of etch to happen. Uh, one thing you may not know is that coffee will not darken steel that isn't hard, or at least past a certain, uh, you know, rock well. <laughs> uh, so tempered steel will work fine as well, but it has to have gone through a hardening process in order for the coffee to have any sort of effect. So I'm going to do a... Um, the same harden on all of them, bring the steel to um, past its curie point uh, and then dunk it in some oil. I'm not going to bother tempering it. Uh, these are just test pieces. It won't really make much difference to the end result. Uh, I just want to make sure that they're hard enough for the coffee to actually do something when we stick it in the jars. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, so I've got these three pieces here that have been finished up to... Kind of, it's, it's a rough 800 grit, but it's 800 grit it doesn't need to be perfect because this isn't like a knife we're selling or anything. This is just for indicative purposes. So it's hand sanded to a rough 800 grit uh, on all three pieces. And I've uh, put center punch marks one, two, and three so we can remember which is which. But uh, to make it a nice, fair, even etch, we're going to clean thoroughly each of these with acetone. Uh, another good way to pre-clean your steel before going in for an etch is to um, just use soap and water, like dish soap, like Dawn dish soap or something like that. Um, works really well. You just need to be thorough with it and make sure while you're washing them you have gloves on because the oils in your skin are enough to uh, completely inhibit the etch. So I'll give these a nice... Thorough cleansing. And these are now ready to go into our respective coffee pots. Alrighty, so we've got a fresh 
batch of coffee made to the same specs as before with room temperature water. We've got the same mix as in the first jar, except this has been left for 72 hours now. And this one is the same mix as the two, but it's been left with uh, 1084 steel in it for 72 hours. Now, every 24 hours, the steel had been taken out, the oxides cleaned off and put back to simulate fresh knives going in. And we are now going to put our cleaned pieces of steel in there. So, first dot is going to be going into the first jar. Two dots is going into our second jar. And three dots is going into jar number three. Now these are going to be left for two hours. And we're going to come back and we're going to see the etching power of each three, of the three uh, pieces of steel. So I'll see you in two hours. And while we're waiting for that to brew up, I do want to just give a quick shout out to my Patreon that uh, you can find in the link below. I do all sorts of cool pro tips and fun content and that on there. So, it, and the higher tiers give you business coaching, uh, which is what I used to do before I was a knife maker. So, um, if you want to kickstart your business and, and get some business coaching personalized to what you need, uh, hit me up, check out the link. Uh, other than that, a huge shout out and thank you to my patrons. They'll all get a big uh, shout out to you all at the end of the video. You guys uh, really make videos like this possible and make my life a hell of a lot easier. So thank you so much. Anyway, back to the video. Two hours later. All right, the time has come, the walrus said. So we've got uh, freshly made coffee, straight coffee that was just left for 72 hours and coffee that had... 1084 steel added to it every 24 hours for 72 hours. So we're going to pull the pieces out of the um, the etch and I'm going to rinse them off because you don't want to rub a, a freshly coffee etched piece. It rubs all the oxides off. You need to give the oxides time to dry. So we're going to rinse them off with water and then we're going to let them sit for a bit and then pad them dry. Um, and I'll just pop them down here, and then when we are done, we'll go over to the workbench and have a closer look. So, let's have a look. Oh, my hands are too big for this jar. Let me get a magnet. There we go. That's pretty black. All right. That there. This jar's got a bit of a wider mouth. Oh, I can just reach that. Ooh, splotchy. And final one. I'm trying to just touch the edges of these. That's pretty black. Very interesting. Let's go over to the workbench and have a closer look at these. See now, this is why I love a good bit of sciencing because you get unexpected results like this one here. So this was the freshly made coffee. This was the coffee that had been left for 72 hours. It was a little bit more than 72 hours, actually. Um, I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> uh, and this is the coffee that had, had fresh steel added to it over and over again every 24 hours. Um, and this looks the darkest, but... These are the fresh oxides that have come out of the bath. What we're going to do now is we want to see, are they just superficial oxides? So we're going to add just a little bit of oil. I'm using three in one oil and some extra fine steel wool. And we're just going to see what they look like. So I'm just going to put just a drop of the oil on each of them. And let's see how it holds up. So... The first one, which was made of fresh coffee, is actually not proven to be as durable. Um, you can see that pale spot in the middle. Around the edges, it's still about the same darkness. But this one, that had had knives put into it and left stale, has stayed jet black. That's, that's pretty cool. And unexpected, I must say. Got my grubby fingerprints all over it, but... 
that is very even across the whole thing. Not perfectly even, still a little bit paler in the center there, but a hell of a lot more even than the one that was made with fresh coffee. Could it be that cold brewing instant coffee and using it for multiple projects is the better way to go? I'd say more research is needed because this was just a rough test. But, good heavens, like this is made with warm water. Oh, no, this was made with uh, room temperature water and then just left. So if you leave it there sitting there, although that looks notoriously like a fingerprint in the middle of it, which I was very careful, though. I was wearing gloves the whole time, except when pulling it out. But I, I was just, when I was reaching into those jars, I was just grabbing it like this. So, can't be a fingerprint. I was very careful. But it looks like there's a spot in the middle that just has not. But even if you discount that spot in the middle, let's see if we can get the camera focus going here. See, it's very pale everywhere else it did not etch very well just in the corners and even then it's splotchy so old coffee definitely not a goer unless it's been fed with manganese steel i wonder if it would work with any type of steel or whether it has to be high manganese steel like 1084 or 1075 or 1095 w2 steels that have a high manganese content but that's a pretty good finish to be honest for darkening the camera has a hard time picking that up i need light glare on it to be able to actually see anything and that was freshly made coffee the way that i've always been doing it interesting so not a super accurate scientifically accurate test by any means but definitely something to think about here because that coffee by now is like I, I, like I said, I forgot about the jars for a little bit. So it's more like 96 hours old. And it had fresh pieces of 1084 added to it every 24 hours. And it's done a better job than I normally get. I'm very keen to see how long that lasts. Because a, a pot of coffee will get moldy after a while. You've got to be aware of that. Even though it's acidic. Or we've noticed this is actually not acidic anymore. It's alkaline. That, that makes it even more interesting. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do do tell me. So, um, yes. Interesting conclusions. I'd like to run this again with taking a little bit more care and monitoring temperatures and really, like, <laughs> I clean these surfaces pretty thoroughly. Um, but, yeah, maybe a little bit more control over it. But that's surprising. Very surprising. Well, colour me surprised, because that was not what I was expecting the outcome to be at, at all. Um, so, like I said, I think more research is needed here. This wasn't the most scientifically accurate test. Things I would do differently is I would um, monitor the temperatures of the waters as well. Um, that was one thing I didn't do. I just said room temperature water, and I live in a place where room temperature varies everywhere from negative 10 Celsius all the way up to like, geez, 30 Celsius. So it's, it's a big swing, um, and I'd like to actually be a bit more consistent with that just in case um, the room temperature had shifted. Uh, my dosages were uh, pretty pretty on point. I wasn't super accurate with the water amounts. I just did it by eye. Um, not that uh, we're talking probably a difference of about 50 mils in the jar. It's, it's not, I, I don't think that would play much of a difference. Um, but the main difference I think that I would do is I might invest in one of those digital pH meters where you can actually dip it in and it'll tell you the pH. Um, I think that's going to be a lot more accurate than the litmus paper. Um, when I was planning this experiment, I expected the swings to be a lot bigger, and so I thought litmus paper would be the way to go, um, but not that much of a swing, really. We moved from around 3 to around 8, which I know, chemically speaking, is a big difference, but I'd like to have a bit more detail about that. But should I revisit this with more accuracy? Let me know down below. And uh, other than that, I uh, hope you guys found this as interesting as I did, and I'll, uh, I'll see you all later. Way down among Brazilians, coffee beans grow by the billions. So they've got to find those extra cups to fill. They've got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil.
You can't get cherry soda Cause they've got to sell their quota And the way things are I bet they never will They've got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil 